Welcome to Grab Life by the Horns. Powered by Legacy Builders Global. And we are Jennifer Pekan and Jan Mark Pekan. Hello and welcome to another episode of Grab Life by the Horns. Uh, today, la after a long period of time, finally together again. And um, we uh, choose the topic um, like energy management, which means like how you can make sure that you have enough energy to be successful in all parts of your life and um, not only for work, but like feel better, uh, be more concentrated, um, like be more, you know, um, efficient in the things what you're doing. And uh, we got inspired by our uh, clubhouse room today uh, when we talked about sleep. And this is what we want to share with you today as well. So um, please welcome with me Jan Mark. Hello, I'm here again. Back Same from location. The <laughs> Back from the quarantine. And uh, we are happy to be together again, finally. <laughs> so uh, let's start with a question uh, to you. Like, uh, what was your biggest learning today? Well, um, there are two things. Um, first of all, the, uh, the, the, the first thing was that, and we, we talked about that in another episode, about that we switched the diet to almost entirely vegan. And the interesting thing was that this morning um, when we had the exchange with uh, a few people that uh, that come regularly to uh, to our clubhouse room, that um, they actually talked about the same thing. Um, they talked about the same experience, what uh, how diet influences their um, um, their sleep. Um, how alcohol does it, how, um, how, depending on what they eat, when they eat it, how they are feeling more fit during the day, but also if they can better sleep or not. That, that was one of the things. Um, the, the other thing is um, in terms of, um, I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm thinking if uh, we maybe should get this, um, this sleep bands like this um um li like the like the apple watch but you have like some some um trackers some sleep trackers i don't know if that um is maybe something that we uh, we should be getting or the other thing is that um i don't know if that actually influences your subconscious if you have a sleep tracker and then you realize when you look at it in the morning that you didn't had your um like deep sleep phase or whatever that you are actually feeling more tired because now you know versus um that you feel maybe think like okay um i'm not feeling so tired uh, because you don't know that you didn't have it Hmm. So I'm, I don't know. Well, I did not uh, thought about getting a, a tracker for this, um, but it was like really um, strange to see. We, we all started with the topic of like, um, if it, uh, like if you have to sleep uh, or if you're not allowed to sleep at all as an entrepreneur. And uh, because there is such a hype around this topic that uh, it's really cool to have all nighters and uh, to have um, like to to sleep less in order to get things done and be successful. But for me, success, and this is like a personal definition for everybody of us, um, is not only about uh, the financial situation. It's like, you know, we have like our our life does not depend only on the financial situation. Like it, uh, it depends on the health, on the family, on the friends we have, on the environment, that we are happy and all the things like that, have enough energy to do everything what we can do. Like what, and this is like what we had as well already experienced is that uh, we are working so hard um, and we less sleep. And then we had a free time off. And in this free time, like for a week, we could not do anything because we were so tired that we could basically not enjoy uh, the time or like do anything else except of, uh, except of sleeping um, and like uh, recharging our batteries. And this is not a sense of um, 
having like uh, like being successful and having money like you know um, not doing anything at all because you worked all, the whole time like this and this is what uh, we already experienced as well with Felix like if we work too hard uh, for a longer period of time and have um, like don't uh, pay attention on our health and energy management then uh, we are too tired to play with Felix and uh, this breaks my heart to be honest and um, this is why um, we changed our lifestyle uh, tremendously, actually, from the, since since uh, like or how we lived like four years ago. Um, obviously, sleep is. I don't like to make a religion out of that. Like sleep less or sleep like at least eight hours. Like you know, you have to. And this was my highlight as well today. You have to listen to your body, and this is what I experienced as well. Like everybody of us is different and has a different um, rhythm, uh, like natural rhythm. And you have to learn how you can follow this rhythm. And uh, this is uh, one of the most important things for me, that uh, you not only learn how you sleep the best way, but when is your peak performance during the day, uh, where you can, you know, can deliver the things you want to do, where you have enough energy to do sports and that you like strategically plan your day um, in that way that you can really make the most out of it. And this is like, I know with kids, it's really different. You don't have to tell me about that, but, um, you know, there is a way it's not working every day. But um, if it works like uh, two or three days per week, it's all fine. Like, you know, every day we learn a little bit more and uh, the kids get older as well. They understand more. And um, it's not like for me, success is not only about the money. It's about as well um, what you can do with the money when you have the time free. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the topic of tomorrow, basically, as well from our clubhouse room, like the the complete and the whole view of the energy management. But so that's, that, that's the joke um, among like people that are very successful and financially very well off is like when they get asked like how, how did that happen and uh, basically they, they say well I didn't have any time to spend the money. Um, that's true. Which, which sometimes is true because if you, uh, I mean if you're working a lot then and this is the other thing about like energy management is uh, because if you if you are working a lot then that means that um, even though you get every day when you wake up you get a new like budget to spend of energy because you're waking up you have a certain budget depending on how good you slept and how long you slept and so on the budget is bigger or it might be smaller but there is always the budget to uh, to spend on energy. But if the budget is spent, it's spent. Then um, then you will get tired. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can have like power naps or whatever, and you can change um, change that a bit, delay it a bit, because it's basically like the uh, the the um, the gas of a car. If you uh, if you're um, if, if it gets almost empty and then you put like you just refill 10 liters then you can go a little bit longer yes but of course not the full distance again because you just refilled a little bit and it's no different with uh, with the energy management if you um, like last night it was like 2 a.m. or something like that when we when we finally went to bed because it was a long uh, a long night with many calls and that's that's okay, but you you will pay the price um, the next day or latest the day after if you can't recover, and this is this is the other thing is um, I think sometimes um, and uh, Yasmin made a good point this morning is that it doesn't feel the same if you if you sleep like two hours four hours like short nights for a couple of nights in a row. And then you play catch up and sleep like 10 hours or 12 hours on the weekend. It doesn't really feel the same. Yeah. You do, and, I, and I think it's because the, the body doesn't reset that fast. <laughs> and if I can just say, like, say in between something, like the older you get, 
the more days of recovery you need, <laughs> I have the feeling as well. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it's like basically when you are uh, when you're just 18 and you uh, and you go clubbing. I know that sounds insane during the pandemic, but there was a time <laughs> you could actually do that. Um, so and you were a lot of people very crowded. Everybody was happy, but that's a different kind of topic. But it, you, if you are 18 and you start like going clubbing and stuff like that, you can go clubbing and drinking and whatever ever and like on three hours of sleep you will be fine but um, the older you get and especially because when you when you have kids energy management is I think even more important um, because it's not like it's not your rhythm because if you are uh, if you are single or maybe if you are a couple that's manageable as well um, and you had like a, a long night for example, you had to work until three. Um, you can like let the other one know, or if you're single, it doesn't matter anyway. You can sleep in maybe until eight or nine, or like you can balance it a bit, but e or maybe even until lunchtime. But uh, if you have like a, a, a son like like we have, and he's almost four years old, I know that will change when he gets into puberty and like all of that. Um, but right now he wakes up at latest six. So, um, and because he goes early to bed, he wakes up and is fully recharged. Um, <laughs> and so you have to handle um, a, a, him. And you don't want to be also all the time then totally tired in the morning and tell him, yeah, here, what, watch a movie or be calm or don't bother me because I need like two coffee to get <laughs> to get over it he he understands that he's very empathic in that way but you you don't want to be like that type of parents that always have to basically shut the energy of your kid down simply because uh you are not able to manage your energy so i think it does become more important the older you get yes because at the other hand like becoming successful in life um, also means that you have to um, it, it's it's a marathon it's not a sprint yeah sometimes you you have to do sprints and mara uh, if you if you look at like marathon races they do sometimes they do sprints in order to beat the competition to get them out of the rhythm and stuff like that you have to use your strengths to do that and sometimes we do it because sometimes we do an all-nighter and we call usually we call that we're gonna set another uh, send another sign to the universe that we really want to be successful and like we don't care whatever you throw at us we're gonna overcome that but you're gonna like you're gonna pay the price that's true and um but the really interesting thing is and i think that um like two less people still are not aware of this is like the most people I would say if if they say well I'm tired I have no energy the answer for them would be I have to sleep more and there are people that say well I need this eight hours sleep at least otherwise uh, you can throw me away or whatever um, and there's the other extreme they say well like Jasmine I would totally shock when she told us that she is sleeping like three to five hours in a, on a regular base I cannot imagine this. This is like something I would love to have this um, this energy or like this this habit or like this is like something in your DNA um, that makes you like that you can handle this less sleep yeah, better. I mean, my mom, my yeah. mom is the same. I mean, she can exactly. run on four hours of sleep for weeks. Exactly. So this this is uh, definitely not me. Um, but um, there is no like I don't want that uh, to say well like, like I said there's no religion from uh, on one extreme and not on the other so and sometimes you need more sleep and sometimes you need less sleep the most important thing is that you listen to your body but sleep is not always the answer if you have no energy because like there is and this is what we what Jan Mark already like, said in the beginning the nutrition part is super super important because and uh, we made the uh, this sample by us uh, by ourselves as well um, like for example if you want to work at night and you have like a big dinner like a heavy dinner like for example pizza or burger or something like that and we love eating fast and junk food as well 
we cut that, as Jan Mark said, like 80% we, we live vegan, but we still love, of course, this, uh, I would say, this forbidden food. The taste. Um, yeah, because like uh, we ate it so, so many years and um, we love this taste. But um, on the other side, if we eat, like, for example, if I eat a pizza um, at night, I cannot work after it really, like, uh, productively or efficiently. And uh, because this is the wrong food to keep my energy level high. And uh, the same is with alcohol. Um, if I drink alcohol, um, I know that I cannot work afterwards anymore. So I'm not the type of person who can drink a glass of wine uh, next to the... Um, like doing a writing stuff or something like that. So this is I'm not the right uh, right uh, the the type of person to do this, because when I drink alcohol, because I drink so less alcohol, um, I'm getting really really fast tired. Um, once I uh, I have this, the other point is as well like not doing any sports. If you don't do sports, this is another thing. Like because sports keeps your energy level high as well. And there are already three, uh, three areas, which I already talked about, what can help you to keep your energy level high and uh, to give you a lot of energy like during the day and um, as well like the type of food. Like uh, when, before we switched to the vegan, we had as well like after lunch, um, I was always tired. I could always sleep like one to two hours. Um, obviously we had no time for this, but <laughs> I was always like done after like this big lunch. Once we switched and I realized um, that I always ate too heavy and too much for lunch, and this is not needed actually, I had more energy to come through the day and I could, um, could be more productive from the morning um, I wake up until I go to bed. And guess what? I'm sleeping better on top of that. So <laughs> this is this is like, um, and this is I think we do this with so many areas in our life that we say, well, for example, I'm tired, I have to sleep. But there is so many different things which are coming together, like the puzzle pieces, which need to be done in order to have the peak performance right. And uh, this I just wanted to point out because this is really important for me. Um, that you have this clear in your mind that it's not only one thing or the other this is like the it, it's intertwined I mean yeah. I mean it, it's all um, it, it's all the little pieces that that come together um, I mean our our body is a is a really is like a great machinery um, I realized that when I had a, a call the other day uh, with a company that is uh, manufacturing tools uh, like for hip replacements and stuff like that and if you if you have to imagine that if you like get a, a hip or shoulder or knee I think he, they, they said like the knee replacements are the worst because they are not really ready yet <laughs> so um, but it's like after eight years you basically uh, eight to ten years you need a new one because the old one doesn't work anymore. So if you imagine that you can like live 90 years with your knees um, and technologically we can only make eight years um, with like all the technology we have, uh, 3D printing, polishing, all of this, um, we can't make it to that that thing is gonna last that long um, in your body. And it, the other thing is, it doesn't grow with you so I mean you could not get like a knee replacement as a kid and it would still be there if you are old so um, th this is like but your body needs that um, uh, that that stuff that that helps the body to get um, to keep the energy but I think the the other important thing is is the mind because mm. the body and the mind are like are really one and one influences the other one very very strongly um, for example if you are if you are not excited about like what you're doing uh, you can probably have the healthiest diet on the planet um, you still will not feel a huge level of energy because you are like you are if you're missing like purpose in life it's kind of the same thing if you don't know why you should wake up um, and I can't talk about depression and stuff like that because 
thank goodness I have no experience with that. I don't know what people are going through uh, when, they, uh, when they have it. Um, so I don't want to be the one talking about how it might feel. But if, if, you are, um, if you don't have a why in your life, if you don't know why you want to be successful, if you don't know why you want to have the promotion, the job, if you don't know uh, why you want to have vacation, if you don't like any of this, um, you will not like get to the level of energy because it's simply your your body might be fit. You can do like you can probably do sports and but you will struggle to do sports and keep a healthy diet and everything if you don't know why. Even though, if you are doing it, you might do all the, let's call it, technical things right, because you take the right food intake, you do the right exercise and everything in order that your body can like maintain the level of energy, but your mind will shut your body then down. Because if you, if you don't love what you're doing, if you're not excited about the next day, if you're not excited about the next month, um, and what life holds for you, then it's going to be, it's going to be really, really hard. It's like there, there for example, like what, what Jennifer uh, said about like all this, the, all the tips, they are, they are completely right. You need to like from diet to exercise to everything. That is one part. The other part is you need to be mentally working out as well. If, yeah. if, if you don't, if you don't nurture your brain in the same way, if you don't try to uh, get better, to learn something um, and to achieve something, then um, you, you can see that very often, and it's actually, it's a shame, you see that very often with people when they retire. There's a huge difference between the people that retire and they already made a plan and have a purpose, being it like the uh, one of my technicians when he retired, he was the leader of the diving club um, uh, locally anyway. So uh, it was like, that's what he talked about. It's like, when I'm going to retire, I'm going to be more diving. I'm going to organize this more like you, if you, if that, that can be a purpose to get up in the morning and um, but if you, uh, if you simply retire, um, and that doesn't matter if you are retiring because you are old and you are on the pension, or if you're retiring because you're financially free, that's also a kind of retirement. Um, if you reach that point and you, uh, and you don't have a plan in place about like the purpose, what's next and stuff like that, um, the energy that brought you there will just like evaporate on like in the because it's all nice to go on let's say a vacation um but it's since you're only used to have this maybe like a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks to longest maybe two to three weeks um if after that nothing starts like if your day only consists in like putting dishes in the dishwasher, like getting dishes out of the dishwasher, what, what's for lunch, what's for dinner, what's for breakfast, um, and basically just, it's not, for me, it's <laughs> not really uh, li living the life at that point, but it's actually um, just like, um, um, it, you're, you're not actively living, you're just waiting for death at that point, if you are just you're just administrating your life. Yeah, the purpose is really important. And uh, this was another point which we had, uh, we spoke already about this week as well, when it comes to communication and teams and partnerships, that if you have a goal together, it's, um, this is basically what uh, partnerships, private and professionally, are uh, driving and keeping alive. Because um, if you have no purpose together, what you want to reach in the next uh, achieve in the next step basically you have not really a why to get up in the morning and um this is uh, this is really uh, this is a great point what you made as well 
um, that uh, that you have this um, this purpose. And you know what? Like we can talk all day long about this, how great it is, and how what we um, um, what changed and how we feel. The thing is, some things, and this belongs to this uh, the things you have to do by yourself in order to feel the change. If you don't. Uh, like even like and take it as a challenge for 30 days this is enough to see already the difference like make it a challenge for 30 days and live healthy do sports and uh, take care of your sleep and you feel a difference with your energy doesn't matter what you're doing and where you are right now and um, this is just like you know self-awareness and make sure that you live the life you want now Another thing popped up into my mind when Jan Mark was talking as well, and it might like it might be on your the question might be on your head as well, like well, I cannot arrange this with my partner or with my family, so you know you can it's just like is your partner willing to do this step with you because like of course we have the people, and Jan Mark and me were really different with that Jan Mark can work easily. Um, like long at night and I fell to sleep like really early and uh, I'm done like basically at 9 10 p.m. but I can get up really easily at 3 a.m. in the morning and start start working again and I'm fit so I'm really focused and concentrated and I have a lot of energy at this time before even my family is waking up so um, you can figure out uh, structures and routines um, that everybody of you can have uh, can live with this personal rhythm and this is really important if you have this goal of course you can always adjust and make the compromises to each other and all the things like that um, a really extreme example we, he we heard this morning uh, from a guy he moved to this <laughs> to this garden house um, in order to have this fresh air and get like this best sleep he can have and he changed his life really dramatically as well but um, uh, but for the better for him and um, his wife or his uh, life partner didn't want to uh, to well, change her life uh, in this consequences by herself so they decided that you know they are just like uh, for the night they are separated and that everybody can live um, the routine they have and this is totally fine you just have to communicate this and find a solution together um, that you can both live with the routines and Jan Mark and me we had the same like uh, for like I would say eight eight to nine weeks maybe ten weeks yeah. um, we made the decision as well that we have like that we we have uh, two sleeping rooms and we separated them and put Felix uh, basically in um, in the parents bedroom um, and uh, Jan Mark was uh, with Felix and um, during the week and I was on my own because um, during the week I get up at 3 a.m. in the morning to get the work done and we knew it's not like <laughs> for the rest for our lives it's just for a few weeks so we had like um, the point at the end already in mind but um, it was really like in the beginning it was it felt really good because like you could like finally we could sleep and as well like um, we, we tried different routines and different rhythms um, and it felt really good because we finally could sleep again like really deep um, it, it was a good it was a yeah. relaxing sleep there was uh, more energy at it, the end. Exactly, exactly. And then at uh, after like a few weeks, we realized actually we don't want to have the separation anymore. And then it was just because of getting the things done and fight through until, you know, um, the things here are changing. Now, thank goodness, my mom is here uh, in Cyprus and uh, she take over a lot of things uh, with Felix as well. So... Um, we can play more around and uh, focus more on our work on this part to normal our times, <laughs> and, and, which back, is amazing. Back to 16 hour days. <laughs> and um, this is uh, like, you have to find, like nobody can describe or like uh, talk, uh, talk you or told you what you have to do or tell you what you have to do. Uh, you have to find the routine based on your rhythm 
and what your partner or your family is willing to go with you. Like you have to find a compromise together that everybody can live to their peak potential. That is, that's true. I, I mean, <laughs> at the um, at the end, you have to. Um, yeah, I totally forgot that after quarantine and everything that we <laughs> that we had separate rooms uh, because, <laughs> because I had to stay short in, term because I had to stay in a hotel um, for two weeks almost. But um, the um, the thing really is, is if you if you look at that, it's it works for us because we know why we are doing it. We know, um, like, we know what we want to have, like, in a couple of years, and we are willing to, like, say, okay, one month, eight weeks, um, like, having, um, like, different sleeping rooms and working around that is worth this, this sacrifice, to put it in brackets, um, because it, it didn't feel like a sacrifice at that point because at the end we were both uh, with with more energy and Felix was also sleeping better uh, because it was cold in his room so he woke up and was actually cold that was the reason why he always woke up and came to us so um, it's um, it, it was like better for everybody at yeah. the end and it and that's the other uh, thing that that we realized very early is when you uh, when you have a child, um, you can try and like try and make the child live by your rhythm, um, but it's very hard <laughs> and energy wise very costly because um, a child is much more likely to follow the the normal biorhythm that they have they sleep whenever they they want like siri is always popping up i have no idea why <laughs> yeah i don't know either so they they sleep also uh they, they sleep always when they're tired they eat all uh, they eat when they are hungry they drink when they are thirsty um i mean they follow this more as like their their body dictates more how to live than their mind in the early, at least in the early years and that means that if you are trying to uh, put your your kid to bed for example at 6 p.m. because you think this is a good idea but your kid is not tired <laughs> then you're gonna simply spend uh, an hour or two hours until your kid is actually tired um, trying to make um, her or him sleep uh, rather than maybe enjoying more, a more relaxed movie or playing something or whatever and then bring them to bed like quarter to eight and they are at, at sleep at eight. So it's like that sometimes you have to and, and this is the advantage if you are uh, if you are single and you have no responsibility for anybody you can basically do how you want it but if you if you have kids then you have to like get that worked into your routine and into your energy management as well because the other thing is if you if you are already let's say like tired from the day because you like you work a lot and the day was exhausting and now you bring your uh, your kid to bed and you have to spend 15 minutes to 30 minutes in a dark room with uh, maybe child sleeping songs playing and um, you are not going to come out of that room and be like full of energy. So you have to take that into account if you are scheduling like your day, your tasks, whatever, um, that even though you are able to get out of the room, <laughs> if you just don't fall asleep and just sleep through, but if you are able to get out of the room, and then maybe sit down and do some stuff um, that you schedule the stuff there that maybe needs less of your brain power or less can go wrong for example for me there is a there is a rule like in the evening i don't do wire transfers because i'm just far more likely to get a number wrong uh, so I established that rule and that's one of the things that so far has worked 
pretty good. And sometimes I have to remind myself on the uh, on the rule uh, when I'm like, okay, I just need one wire transfer. So you have to just stick to it. Yeah, um, basically this is um, in a. I don't want to say in a nutshell because like we nope. are more than <laughs> thirty minutes. <laughs> what we talked about now, the energy management, but there's so many areas and this is so deep this topic uh, and we could talk forever for, um, about this topic because like we really made our own experience we did a lot of research we tried a lot and uh, at the end um, you have to be open for everything um, like try things out and try to get your body as good as you can and um, at the end you know the better you feed yourself with uh, like mind feeding <laughs> and um, and as well with nutrition and uh, and liquid <laughs> and, water sleep. and sleep uh, all of this like uh, supports you being successful in life and um, with this I um, yeah, want to say goodbye for this week and um, yep. looking forward to talk to you next week with another exciting topic and if you have a wish please let us know have an amazing week. Bye. Thanks, guys, for listening in. Bye. Do you want to get paid? Introducing Legacy Builders Global, where everybody gets paid. We don't create investors. We create legacy builders. Legacy Builders Global. Visit us at www.legacybuildersglobal.com.